the squads are in place. Mr. Gojo has arrived. That's about as far as we got. And that's all that's really going <laughs> to happen from this point onwards. Uh, I am kind of shocked. I for sure expected us to have a lot of like setup leading into it and then thought things were going to kind of go crazy. Seems like they're just going to write us out for like 15 straight episodes of just whatever they can and where it's going to be nonstop, which I mean, it's cool at all, but it's just like a, it's a different setup that I'm kind of used to for things. So it's, it's curious. So I'm, I'm excited to, I guess, kind of see what more we have to kind of get into this. If you like it all, hit the like and subscribe. You may allow to me, feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. Leave any comments with those episodes or series. Before we get going with the episode, if there is no reaction, because there won't be at some point a couple weeks down the line, because Toho is the worst company in the world and likes to block every video that I post, there'll probably be a link in the description for you to go and uh, watch the reaction if you're reviewing this a couple weeks late. Now, let's get going with episode eight. Everything for Geto's plan seems to be in place here and going pretty well, according to kind of what he wants. Uh, they're doing a good job at doing what they have to kind of isolate Gojo in a way uh, to make their ends of things work. And then Mahito's running around being a menace elsewhere. I I'm still uncertain of his motives or his reasons for what he's doing and why he is where he is and like what exactly... Uh, that whole purpose is my understanding of that is simply just he's elsewhere right now to constantly like keep moving around or drag people uh away uh so that they can make this plan work a little bit more so there's less people who try and come back up gojo in any sort of way or come do whatever uh or possibly do what they have to do after their plan is kind of in place here uh because I, I would argue the entire direction that we're going to head now is do what they have to uh to hold off gojo and they said it's 20 minutes so i'd argue unless they want to hunter hunter this with our uh our staircase and our entering into the <laughs> to our invasion uh during the Khmer anarch where we have to go like 15 episodes straight of just not of uh you know the slowest movement ever unless they want to do that I i'd argued the 20 minutes passes over the next episode unless they have to show us elsewhere and show us other things that are going on then it could last over like two but I'd argue that's about 20 minutes there. The plan is to uh, kind of just distract and pass time so that we can uh, use this jail, I think they said it was, right? And we're, I believe the main goal here is to seal away and get rid of Gojo and stop him because they're aware that they're not going to be able to kill him or do anything, so they have to mobilize him in some sort of way. So the goal here is to do that, which makes plenty of sense uh, and it's understandable. Oddly enough, not the direction I was feeling like it's going to go, and it still might not, but I'd argue now for whatever reason, I'm feeling more so that it will. Uh, it seems as though they may be successful here and they may be successful fast, uh, which I think would make a lot of sense narratively to eliminate the biggest threat in a way because gojo is the type of person who is able to basically take out and do anything that he wants right he'll kill literally anybody in his path it seems like uh so if we are able to do something that kind of blindsides him in a way that he's not aware of and doesn't expect to happen and we're able to seal him in some sort of way here uh it allows for the remainder of this arc to be everybody else that gets involved to now have to be taking on fights and going against all the other uh enemies and stuff that we have here uh, which allows Mahito to do what he wants and starts, you know, to fight people and it allows all the other guys to, I think they have a main goal as well that I can't know for certain, but do whatever it is that their goal is uh, and kill the people that they want or use them in whatever way they want. And I, I think that's a direction that would work really well narratively uh, to take us down that path and eliminate that, that threat. Because the thing is, if we hold the Gojo part out till the end, uh, and then have the uncertainty of, oh, are they going to be able to get rid of him or not? Like, what is the the plan? There's always that thing in the back of your mind, like, this guy's going to come and he's just going to fucking kill everybody and we're going to be victorious at the end of the day. You know, it's one of those, like, oh, it makes it kind of lame in my mind like it's always in the back of your mind that this person's here and he's gonna be able to save you and protect you and that's usually what really strong and op characters are you know there for it's like the typical uh thing in like one punch man or something that you'll get right where the entire fight won't be going your way or will be kind of difficult and then saitama will be in the background like he won't be involved in it at all but then he just randomly shows up and he saves you at the end of the day because you know he's not involved here but you always have that in the back of your mind that the fucking strongest guy in this universe is here and he can actually just show up at any point and do this it makes it similar uh similar here and feels that same way so i think narratively to make this 
hit as much as it can and actually really progress us forward the best route would be very shortly now actually in the future to do something where we can immobilize gojo and allow for everybody else to come into this conflict and really allow shit to to hit the fan and get going which i think will be really fun if they go that route so i'm i'm more so hoping that that is the case uh for us to head down and i think that's kind of where we're gonna go a few standout moments or just things in the episode i noticed uh Mime has her brother it appears here unless he's just calling her that because he's weird it seems like they're related in some sort of way you know he's weird and they have a very gross bond and connection that i don't enjoy or like but it is what it is he's her yes man so there's that uh, we get our usual suspects going up here against gojo and this is one of those situations why i am also preaching for the idea that doing away with gojo here works perfectly uh because these guys pose zero threat to us even dudes like mahito and ghetto and stuff to me pose zero threat i don't i don't fear one time that gojo wouldn't end up victorious in a fight against any of them the way that they've built him up makes you believe that he's literally the strongest fucking person in this world and the only person who can have an opportunity to go against him and and possibly defeat him even though he probably wouldn't be able to uh would be sakuna so having a fight against any of these guys involving him makes it pretty useless and it doesn't really work well so the only way narratively as i said previously to uh kind of progress this is to do something where you don't kill the guy because you're not going to be able to but you do something to kind of do away with him or, or seal him away for now which is what it seems like the plan would be this is where we get dragged to a different station or a different area uh and we have to focus and worry about uh, mahito and the things that he's up to once again i'm still uncertain of his his reasons for being where he is but it seems like ghetto has like an overall plan and he's putting everybody in place to do certain things for certain reasons uh so i'd i'd argue that's more so like his he's just serving his purpose for what it is but i, I think it definitely is along the lines of we're trying to drag as many people away as we can so that if we get things to go we have time to set up and, and do what we need but also uh to a point that nobody can invade and possibly figure something out in a way to kind of save or protect or help gojo at the end of the day so i, th I think that would be more so the the plan that we do we meet our our uh, grasshopper guy who is a very clever guy you know he's very fun the, the whole interaction with him i enjoyed a lot and i think he was a very fun enemy for us to go against here so i was <laughs> overall very happy uh that that was able to the fight with them is kind of eh, to me it doesn't really do much i don't really care for it the whole explanation about like what they were doing with uh the stuff here uh i don't follow is it just supposed to explain him and the things that he can do uh or is it supposed to be like more of a setup of you know because of the user or because of what mahito is able to to transform him into and kind of create in a way uh is this allowing more things to kind of come as a result of him uh and it plants like a whole bunch of different curses and stuff to be placed in here that allows the more difficult battle for them and distracts them even longer or is it literally just to explain his abilities which doesn't do a good enough job and kind of makes it pretty lame uh this whole sequence is pretty trash i'm not gonna lie uh, I don't know why it looks like the way that they made it look and I don't like it like this also I think fights like this are the most boring and lame thing which I pointed out earlier I, I don't like when it's just two people standing there and punching each other like this I've never enjoyed those so to me it does absolutely nothing so the fight overall came out pretty lame but I think the personality of the two works pretty well uh when he pulled his finger out here I did whatever <laughs> just made like it looked like his fucking cock was growing and then you just goes into like beats it <laughs> it destroys <laughs> it's weird as hell uh anyways mahito realizes he has to do what he has to do and he has to get out of here i think it makes perfect sense too that yuji is going to be the one who will ultimately end up probably battling and fighting against him and i think that works perfectly because why else like who else would be the setup right we've set that up already all of last season so of course that's going to end up happening also i talked about it uh earlier too but i'll, I'll mention it again the layers that we're able to have of this battle because we're able to have things not just all outside or on the surface or something and we don't have to like be in the sky and like do it right like we can do things we can have it in this like train station right and we can have multiple layers to the floors that we're on right and then you it's also very vast like in the the width and everything that we have so there's so many different 
ways that we can kind of take it and put you in different areas uh, that make the fighting more interesting than having you just kind of stuck in one location where they originally trapped us the first time. So I think it's a good way to expand upon the way that they set it up first. I really like this area at the playground and stuff where these two are having their conversation and the way that they change like the kind of the tone and the colors that they use, I think looks really, really cool uh, and is very, very fun. Basically, Get There just explains a lot here, though, uh, on the what their plans are and how exactly Gojo is going to act and what we have to do to kind of stop him and how he works better alone and when we have these other people around and we put these these harmless you know non-sorcerers in the way he's not going to go on a rampage here and be able to just kill you but i think that's the problem i think they are undervaluing what he can possibly do here and underlooking his ability um and also just undervaluing his values in a way because they've built gojo up this entire time as somebody who does not care for the weak and he does not care for these non-sorcerers and these people like this so why would he go out of his way to kind of protect them or worry or care for them like sure he's not just going to go out of his way and want to kill them but he's not going to go out of his way and be like oh this is my main goal is to kill them or something so he's still also not going to have an issue though if he has to take them out in the process of taking you out because he thinks that it's for the better uh and then we get to see him be a little way too op here and then just teleport his way out uh, we have to use very strong defense which makes plenty of sense as well because he doesn't want to actually activate his uh his domain or he doesn't want to have to use anything uh, that can harm or kill these other people on his way like i said i think they're underlooking that a little bit but i still think that's like a last resort thing like he'll do that as the last possibility if he realizes that he doesn't have anything else uh uh, and I think that it works pretty well for what they're attempting to or trying to explain. I really like the look that they give him here at the end. And it, you know, makes us see this, the, the badass version of him that we kind of felt in the flashback before and the things that we saw the end of the first season which makes plenty of sense and us there for us to speculate and see the things going forward i am fairly excited to see what's to come uh, i i think i would argue i'm usually wrong so you know just <laughs> understand that but whatever i predicted or said is probably not going to happen but i think if things go the way that I, I expected, I think narratively we can really push the, the plot in a very interesting way, uh, especially because we also have so many other characters involved here that we haven't either shown off where they're at yet or are just kind of on the outsides and just waiting to get involved and get into this. So it could make things very fun. Uh, and I kind of hope things go the way that I'm predicting. Usually, like, I don't hope things go the way, I guess, because usually I'm, like, negative with the way I think, but I, I think this is a, a fun route that we can really go, so I'm kind of hoping I'm right uh, with the things that I'm saying. It's going to be all for me, though. If you liked it all, like, and subscribe. Do me a lot to me. Feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. Leave any comments with this episode of this series. I'll be back for the ninth one next week. You guys have a good one, though. Peace.